<laughs> Rusty, I need to get on and say hello to the nice people. Oh, you are such a time waster. What a happy little time waster. Good morning, everybody. How are you all? I hope you're well. Um, me and Rusty are boiling. It's not that it's terribly hot. It's only about 22, oh, 22, 23 degrees. It's intensely humid today. There's a reason for that. And that reason is one of the reasons I'm here today to do a bit of uh, remedial work, shall we say. Um, we had a load of rain a couple of days ago. It was great. Um, it was a day when I wasn't going to come to the garden. I didn't have the energy or the knee strength to get here and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to still have to go to do my watering. I was dreading it and then the rain started and it was fairly gentle rain. So, you know, great on the soil, not hammering it, not just running straight off. And it lasted all day and most of the evening. Uh, so yeah, brilliant. What that now means is all the all that moisture in the ground, all the heat we've got, it's all starting to evaporate. It's just like water coming up into our faces. And there was me being relieved at the rain came down yesterday and discovered all the slug damage. Now, I got on with a few things yesterday. I didn't film at all because partly I was feeling a bit tired and disheartened by things and I was probably a bit grumpy, but also I just really needed to get on and I didn't have the time to make a video or, or more to the point, I didn't have time later on in the day when I got home to do all that that it entails. Anyway, sorry, back to yesterday. So what I discovered when I arrived, I've lost about half of my cucumbers, about half of my celery, about half of the beans which I had direct sown, including the cocoa de pampol. They've been nibbled off as they've come up. So one of the things I'm going to do today, I've got plenty of cocoa de pampol seed left. I'm going to sow a load in, let me just reach over for them, in these cell trays. I mean this is, this is crazy late sowing. I would normally sow them about mid-April to then transplant out into the garden at the end of May. I've never not had cocoa de pampol at this time of year. So it's really, really late. But what I'm hoping, thinking is, for the last few years, our summers have been quite long and we've had really good uh, sunshine hours and warm temps right into the middle of October actually. I know that because that's it's that's when I tend to do my squash and dried bean harvests right into the middle of October so I'm hoping yeah look it's a bit of an experiment it's really late to do it but I've got nothing to lose have I because I've got enough seed might as well give it a go. Um, what else did they have? Yeah, they're so little cubes. I'm going to try something new. <laughs> the cubes that I have got left look awful. We're going to go out, we're going to go straight to the cuke bed in a second for me to show you the cuke frame because I know folk have asked me to show me building it, but honestly, yesterday I just had to get on and do it. I'll show it to you now though. It's dead simple, it's going to be easy to explain as well. Um, I think it was Paul was saying in one of his recent videos, literally all the jobs that need doing in the garden at the moment, there's more than you could possibly do in a day. Even if I was to spend eight hours a day here for the next week, there are more jobs than there are hours. So we really have to prioritise. And one of my priorities is to get the plants planted, get them out of pots and into the ground. <sighs> <clears throat> excuse me, partly because I don't want them to get pot bound, they're not going to grow in a pot, but also those little pots they're in, they dry out so quickly, so so quickly and we're due now another, I've only looked at the next two weeks ahead but we've got another two weeks of sunshine and hot days, I'd have to water them every day, twice a day in some cases, I can't get here every day so yeah the priority at the moment is to get plants planted 
all three other jobs just as and when. So with the cute frame, yeah, I, I got on and, and put that up yesterday. Haven't planted the cukes yet. They look really sickly. I don't know what's gone on. So because the remaining ones look so sickly, I've decided, because I've got a ton of seed, I'm going to try sowing some direct. I've never tried it before. Again, it's probably quite late, but because we are so warm, hopefully they'll get going pretty quickly and they'll romp away. So if you remember this year, I purposely sowed my cucumbers four weeks later than normal anyway. So I sowed them, gosh, I've forgotten now, beginning of May instead of beginning of April. I sowed them later in the hopes that I'd get the harvest to coincide with the tomatoes because the cute harvest has always come before the tomato harvest in previous years. Anyway, so yeah, another one, really late, but again, the wonderful thing about cucumbers is you get a million seeds from one cuke, so plenty of those. But the other, you can't come across here, Rusty, there is no room. I've got five cell trays, each cell tray is, has 15 cells in it. Five trays of five, are you gonna jump down? Let him go first, there we go. Five different types of brassicas. Um, <laughs> rusty hair in my nose. And the idea being that from, I, I, I put a sort of four or five seeds in each cell. The idea being that I have 20 of each brassica, so I end up with 100 brassicas. Yay! I want at least 15 of each, so 75. So they'd finally really started to get going and one of my jobs for yesterday was to start pricking them all out because they were crowding and like the trays were just a mass of gorgeous bushy plants. Brilliant, let's get them pricked out. Opla. Can you see, look. One, two, three, but four decent ones left from this whole tray. They just, they just chomped them to smithereens. Slugs or snails, not sure who. Don't know who's responsible, but I know it was a slime bag. So, um, look, it'd be really easy to be utterly dismayed at this. You know, I was, I was. When I saw it, I thought, oh, are you kidding me? This year is so tough already. I don't need any more setbacks. Uh... Yeah, it is annoying and frustrating, but we can't let these things stop us in our tracks or, you know, deter us from carrying on because every year there's a problem of some sort, you know. It's just part and parcel of being a gardener. We have some things which are a great success, other things like carrots which are a total fail. Um, every year is different and just when you think you know what you're doing, the next year apparently you don't know what you're doing anymore so yeah it's it's okay to feel upset and disheartened when things like this happen and of course that's how I felt yesterday but it's not an excuse to give up so having seen the state of my poor wee brassicas uh, out and about in the garden and then as, as other friends were showing up I was sort of saying do you have any spare brassica seedlings by any chance of course, other folk have had theirs nibbled, but I did manage to secure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, ten wee seedlings. There are one, two, three, there's four purple sprouting broccolis and six cavallo nero. And what was great, these came from Pip and Joy, who gave me the black Churchill uh, climbing bean. What was great was they'd planted out their tomatoes far too early, bless them. They did them at the beginning of May. They've kind of, well, not kind of, they lost pretty much all of them. Now, I happen to have spare tomato plants, that are really strong, healthy, robust plants. So I was able to give them a tray of, I can't remember if I gave them 10 or 12. I may have a couple more spare if they need them. So isn't that lovely? We've, we've both, in, in an instant, solved part of each other's problem. 
yeah, I wasn't a happy bunny down here yesterday, I can tell you that much because of this slug damage, but we carry on, don't we? Right, okay, let's go and have a look at, take your packet of seeds with me, I'll go and show you the cuke frame and just briefly describe, I mean, it's, I think it's self-explanatory, but I know folk did ask me specifically to show how it's built, show you that. Let's get some seed in. Oh, I'll take some markers because I can't decide. I'll show you the cukes in a second. I'll, I can't decide whether I want to plant those cukes today, whether they look too weak, whether I need to give them a few days of recovery. Or do I plant them today, risk transplant shock and killing them completely? I'm not sure. So what I'll do, <clears throat> actually, I'll use these instead. Sorry, excuse me a sec. I will sow some seed but I'll put a marker where I've sown it. So if I don't plant today and I plant later on, I can plant the plants between where I've got the seeds. You know what I mean, don't you? Right, come on, cuke bed. Oh, I can't get over this uh, weather today. I think I'm gonna be <laughs> sweating shortly. It really feels like there's a wet, hot, wet blanket on the top of me. Anyway, the cucumber frame. Hopefully you can get a good idea of it from there. It really is very simple. I start by putting in four um, vertical sticks. Perpendicular, is that the right word? Perpendicular to the soil, at 90 degrees with the soil. Those four go in. Then they ha there's a corresponding four sticks, which form this slant coming backwards. So they go in about a foot and a half ahead on the ground and then gently slope backwards. What angle is that? Maybe 35 degrees or so. And if you remember um, from mentioning previously, that over there is south. Behind me is north. So this is elevated to face south all day to maximize sunshine. So yeah, Get these four front ones in, the sloping ones, tie them off at the top. Dead simple, honestly. And then it's just a case of I create this sort of little sort of ladder effect with long bamboos going across the whole run, tied in, tied in, tied in, tied in, tied in, lots and lots of tying. And that's it. The only thing I will add, I haven't done it yet because I haven't quite finished with all my structure making. And every year we do lose a few holes don't we a few snap or what have you so I've done it yet I'm going to see what I've got left over but then at the back I will do I will do one at an angle this way one at an angle the other way just to brace it that direction so it's it's sturdy that direction but just that direction I mean it won't get upla the plants they don't get massively heavy and obviously as the cucumbers are getting big I'm picking them taking them off anyway but yeah it's just if I get most of my wind from the south too but if I was getting really strong gusts from the east or west it could send it flying right I'm dripping already let's have a look at these baby cucumbers and get some seed in as well I think I really think I do need to get some seed in Ah. Uh, 12 little things left and look at the state of them they really do look sickly they've gone so pale now i don't know whether this is a bit of shock that because it was so hot and bright last week i did put shade netting on them just to to give them a bit of protection perhaps i didn't harden them off well enough i'm not sure but yeah, they look proper sickly. You know, I might as well bung them in. Let's just see if they've got any root on them. Let's make a hole first of all. Oh, actually, um, let me space them first of all. <coughs> and then, like I said, I'm just going to direct so between. Oh, I'm going to put you on the end because I don't fancy your chances at all and so on. So let's get this one in so we can have a look together at the, you can see from that can't you just how, how moist this soil is. That's how much rain we had. 
Bear in mind, this is two days ago we had all the rain. So I'm always saying, you know, even though the surface looks dry, before you start watering, do stick your fingers into the soil because the chances are it's still moist down there. Right, any roots at all on you, little one? You know what? Yeah. The, the way they were looking up top, I was starting to think that there was nothing below. Okay, little one. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, look at the state of them. They really, they're not happy, are they? So, mm, this soil isn't exactly the finest tools. What shall I do with the seeds? Yeah, let's give it a go. <clears throat> so the seeds are quite small. They don't need to go down very far. That's better without gloves. So you see the seed is really, really quite tiny. So it only needs to go, gosh, a centimetre, maybe a centimetre down. I'm actually thinking, as a bit of a belt and braces, I might stick two in there. If they both come off and one looks a bit weaker, I can just snip the weaker one out. Yeah. So they really, really only need to be sort of just really almost scratched in. So I can pop my marker there. I think it's a useful thing to have the marker anyway because then if, if all of these succumb, at least I'll know where to, at least I'll know where to look and hope and do a bit of praying to the markers. Okay, let's get the rest of these in and then I think a bit of remedial work with the brassicas. And although I said uh, that the ground is really moist down there, I'm going to put a little bit of a sprinkle of water on each one just to help the roots settle in. <clears throat> and then sprinkle myself, I think. so poor. Oh, come on little guys, you can do it. Please do it. Another of the jobs I got done yesterday was to get all my tomatoes planted. <clears throat> I always plant my tomatoes with a bunch of Epsom salts in the planting hole. I shall put a card up there somewhere to show last year's video because it's got a really detailed explanation of Epsom salts, planting depth, etc, etc. So I'll put the card up and I think the tomato bit starts at around the eight minute mark. Yesterday, when I was planting though, I ran out <laughs> of Epsom salts, so I'm going to give these all a sprinkle on the top and water it in. I'll give you a closer look at the tomatoes in a second. Let's just get this done. For you. And I tell you what, why don't you have a bit more too over here? 
Okay, let me give you whoop, a close look at these Tommies. I'd better be quick. It's just starting to spit with rain, which was not forecast. So you can see how massive poles. Now, is that optimism or what? <laughs> Actually, when I went to get replacement poles last year, they didn't have any six footers left, only the eight footers. So these are eight foot canes. But actually, especially these at the front, this is Gardener's Delight. These can get to seven or eight feet in a good year. So they suddenly look really diddy now they're planted. But bear in mind, I'll give you an idea of how they Bear in mind, half of the plant is below soil level. That's so good to get them in. So this is, oh, it is, it is really starting to rain. So I'm dashing this way so I can make a run for it to the shed. This is two rows of eight. So 16 in total of Gardener's Delight. They're a slightly higher acid tomato, so they're great for bottling. They're supposed to be a cherry, but they always come up bigger. They're great raw. They're great cooked, bottled. They're just an absolute bog standard, real kind of banker. They tend to come a bit later though. So in a blight year, if Gardener's Delight is all you have, you're in danger of losing the lot before a good harvest. Behind them, I've got um, Rose de Berne. I've decided to go with eight this year rather than last year's four because I'm now addicted to Richard and Paul's pasta sauce recipe. These would be great for it. And then behind, another eight. Um, and these are all the Amish paste. Amish pasty at the moment, they're all looking. Both the Amish paste and the Rose de Bern are oh, looking a little bit sad and fragile at the moment, aren't they? They should perk up. And I've got a couple of real randoms uh, they haven't done great. I've got a self-seeded plum, a mini plum, and a self-seeded orange cherry, which I'm actually now starting to think, with the carrot bed there, do I bother doing a second sowing, or do I just fill it up with all sorts of spare bits and pieces and just, you know, not have that stress of trying to get carrots again. I haven't decided yet. I'll think on it. Right, <laughs> better get you lot inside the shed because it is really starting to uh, to rain now. Oh, thank goodness these are in though. Just a little something else I can get on with while it's spitting with rain out there is um, to do a couple of my pebble labels. Now, I don't necessarily label everything. And, you know, I mean, I know, I know if something's climbing bean or, you know, dwarf bean or if it's a potato, but I do label them sometimes if I'm growing a variety which is new to me. So, for example, I'm growing stir on onions this year, so I'll do a label for them. And the other onions which I keep forgetting the name of. I don't know why, because it's quite a distinct name. Cupido. And I have to stop myself from calling them Stupido. <laughs> yeah, so quite often, for example, in my climbing beans, I will make labels to put in there. At this stage of the year, when before everything gets really sort of growing away, you know, when they all come out of the ground, they all look pretty similar. <laughs> so I'll put labels on. Like I say, if it's something new to me, yeah, I'll put a label on. So especially, you know, when I'm walking around doing the tour and showing you guys, I like to be able to tell you what a variety is. And then we can both see together if it's something that's doing really well. Yay, keep that variety for the following year. Um... So yes, I, I tend to do it with the beans. Obviously I've got it, I haven't labelled my Gardener's Delight tomatoes because I know what they are. But when I was planting the Amish paste and the Rose de Bern, <laughs> I have to say it like that, Rose de Bern, oh, René. <laughs> uh, they both looked quite similar. So I thought, yeah, I better put a label out now because until they actually start producing, I think they are going to look similar. Now, speaking of climbing beans, 
I think that drizzle is uh, abating somewhat. Let me go and give you a quick update to show you how the pot sown beans on the deck are doing. It is now 12 days, I think, since they were sown. So let's go and have a look at those. Well, that's better. Now I know which is which. I've got three rows of Cupido and two of Sturin. Oh, and here comes the first strimmer start up of the day. Uh, one of the things I did yesterday, this is again talking about priorities and sort of picking up from what Paul was saying the other day about, you know, there's only so many hours in the day, you have to pick the priority jobs. Um, one of the things, it was the last thing I did yesterday actually, was weed this bed, the onions, the white onions. There were loads of self-seeded nasturtiums. In fact, I think this year I've probably got more self-seeded nasturtium and calendula than I have seeds coming up in any of my directly sown seed beds. Ah, never mind. Yeah, so I did give this um, a weed because the nasturtiums will get massive in no time and totally choke the onions. And of all the plants in the garden, there are loads of beds. Like, for instance, over with potatoes, there's, a, there's an absolute ton of nasturtiums in there. I just leave them. They won't bother the potatoes. They'll pop up elsewhere and I'll leave them. But no, not in the onion beds. They really, really do not like competing with anything else. Right, I was going to show you the beans on the deck, wasn't I? Oh, so nice to see all this planting done good stuff ah and this is another priority today this is the cocoa de pampol bed where i so direct oh, i've got a right massacring from the slugs you can see that one was trying to do something nibbled nibbled nib i mean there's just they're nibbled down to tiny little stalks so at the moment in that bed in terms of viable looking beans i've got about four that's worse than the very first year when I started with just eight seeds. That will not do. Right, okay, yeah, priority to get those, um, to get the cell sown ones in their cells today. But yeah, this is all the direct sown beans from, like I said, I think, I think it was 12 days ago. Less than a fortnight. The first ones to show any signs of doing anything, these three trays are the Gigantes. Gigantes by name, Gigantes by nature. Oh, I've lost one there to the Oh, I've lost one over there. That's why I always sow more than I need. The ones that are coming look good. Then in this tray, these 12, ideally I want at least six. Uh, Nibbled, 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 not quite up yet. Is that a little bit of heat? Oh no, nibbled right down to the stalk, nibbled. This is my Cherokee Trail of Tears. I planted 12 in the hopes to get six and it looks like I'm gonna have seven if the slugs leave them alone now. Exactly the same in the tray behind as in plant 12, hope for six. This is my Helder, which is like this stringless, well, it's somewhere between a runner bean and a French bean. It's like a runner bean, but it's flat and smooth. I like it for being smooth. So I've got these two, these two, they look good. That one, I lost one of its leaves. That's had the lot gone, that's had the lot gone, that's had the lot gone. Oh, pesky, pesky critters. And then, really importantly, the precious, precious babies. These four are the Black Churchill. And, oh, dare I say it, dare I hope it, not a nibble. Woohoo! Then at the back of these two trays, ooh, falling over. In my loo roll trays, this tray is, I can't remember now, I think it's 20 of each. Yes, it's 20 of each. I've got, at the front, I've got the Shaz's Paul's runner beans. And at the back, Paul's Madeira maroons. But you can see they're all about to burst through. Yay! All that gorgeous green knuckle showing. I've just seen, can you see that? That one's trying to grow out the side of the loo roll. However you want to grow, let's grow you. So that's 20 of each of those. With And the hopes was I'd have 12 
of each to actually plant in the garden. If I get a few more, I'll dot them around the place. And then next door, I've got, oh my goodness, I've got, I think I've done 10 bolotti in the hopes of getting six. They're at the very front, they're coming. You see they're like bursting out. And then at the back, that must be there for 60. No, 30, what am I talking about? 30 Coco Sophie, and I would like 15 to come good for me. So I think, yeah, I think I should just about have enough. Just about. If, um, you know, if I have some spares, like I said, I'll dot them around. I might even put a couple of spares in this bag. Oh, look at this pretty freezer with its slight lilac tinge to the edge. Can you pick that up? What's lovely is Paul gave these to me. Let me show you the ones in the hair bed again. Now mine are all coming up white, purple, lilac, bluish, which I love. They're my favourite flower colours. Oh, these ones are slightly going over now. These ones are oh, so gorgeous. And the, all the ones Paul's got coming out in his pot are sort of oranges and reds and yellows, really, really bright and vibrant, which goes so well with his flower garden. Chuffed with those. Oh my goodness, it's a steamy, muggy day. Right, I need to crack on. What's the next job? I think, having looked at these, it reminds me, I think the next job is to sow a whole load of Coco de Pampol in cells to um, hopefully, oh, please, 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 hopefully fill up this bed. I've definitely got my glow on today. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Humid. Um, I've got my neck thing somewhere. You know that I was sent from Australia. I soak it in water. It's got like a gel in it that expands and holds the cool water to put either around my neck or I tie it up around my hair. Uh, riveter, rosy style. I always forget. That's, that's Bruce Frost. I, I do it the wrong every time. Anyway, I'm going to call it a day for this video there because I think actually by the time I've sort of caught you up on sog fiasco, cucumbers, the tomatoes, those climbing beans, we've run out of time to carry on. I am going to carry on though today uh, with some more sewing, pricking out bits and pieces and really importantly I need to give the cabbages a bit of protection. I'll talk about that in the next video. So until then, or we might do something at home in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, I think to be honest, the next few videos, they probably are going to be mostly from the garden because it's a big push now. I really want over the next week. When I was doing the June tour, I said over the next week to two weeks. Realistically, I knew it was going to be two weeks. Over the next two weeks, I really need to get this garden planted and finished. As finished as a garden ever is. So yeah, I think loads of garden time this coming week. Whatever it is, I will see you then, soon, I hope. In the meantime, <sighs> someone can get me some iced water, will you? <laughs> Take care of yourselves, everyone. Bye for now.